My name is Ivana and I'm a volunteer responder at the Vancouver Crisis Center. Since quarantine started, have you seen an influx of calls? Uh, that I couldn't tell you because I don't actually know how many calls we get for a given month or a given week. I can't tell you year over year. Um, but what I, I can tell you about quarantine, it's interesting. Um, it's the first time the people answering the phone are going through the same thing as the people on the other side of the phone. So that's the thing that's changed the most is that we were all going through the same thing. There's a quote from Hamlet when Polonius is saying goodbye to Laertes, among other things, the advice he gives him is to give every man thy ear, a few thy voice. Do you think this advice is relevant at all to your line of work? Uh, yes, because we are taught to, to hear people. Uh, we're not taught to give advice. In fact, we can't give advice because we don't know these people. We don't know what their life is like. We only know the crisis that they're having in that instant. And quite often all we can give them is our ear to, to tell us what's wrong, to tell us why they're struggling big or small, to not interrupt them uh, with our voice or our curiosities and to let them get out what they need to get out and to be there in that moment with them rather than trying to fix a problem that we can't fix. This above all, to thine own self be true. When you're close to somebody, you know their context, you know enough about their life to be able to offer something. But I find that in our case, we don't have that. So often, you may be asked for advice, but that's not always what people want. Like in my personal experience with in my life in general and for myself personally, like even if I say I want advice, I don't actually want it. I know what I want. I know somewhere in my head is the thing that I want and I just need to be helped there. Um, and that's the value of giving someone your ear, is that they can talk themselves to the next point of their crisis. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. They may not talk themselves to a solution, there may be no solution, but there may be a way for someone to get through the next 15, 20 minutes of their life, the next day of their life. Just to have someone acknowledge how they're feeling that's important to them and, and being able to hear those feelings and name those feelings in what ways do you think the training you've received at the center has been useful outside of work so outside of the center has been useful because it makes me i would hope a better friend a better coworker, um better kid <laughs> better sister like someone who is capable of hearing people and hearing potentially what they need, even if they don't necessarily say it. So I think it's made me a better communicator in general and someone who's more inclined to let a silence sit than try to fill it just for my own sake. What do you think the average person would learn most from doing your job? To be quiet. It's true. Yeah. Man. But to to let other people fill a, a space with what is upsetting them, with what's hurting them. Um, because so often, you know, we, we'll hear someone struggling and we'll say, oh, but here's this and here's this and here's this and I tried this and, you know, my friend Karen tried this other thing. And when that's not what that person needs, they just need you to sit there and hear what's wrong. So I think that's what the, the average person would, would learn to, to be quiet. Wherever someone sees this movie, I'm sure there is a local or national or regional crisis center. Um, don't be afraid to call one. They're very helpful. <laughs>